So far, we've talked only in qualitative terms, and we've said things like domain curves slope downwards and whatnot. But as economists, it's very useful for us to, in addition, have a way to quantify this idea of responsiveness. For example, when we're talking about a demand curve, we'd like to know how responsive quantity demanded is to things like price. So we have a number of options. The most obvious of the options is just to think about the slope of the demand curve. And the slope of the demand curve, as we said before, is just equal to the change in price divided by the change in quantity. So this is one option. It's not quite as intuitive as we would like because it really answers the question, what is the responsiveness of market prices in terms of a one unit change in quantity demanded? That's a little strange. So what if we just flip this guy upside down and we could say, well, let's just take the reciprocal of the slope of the demand curve and then we get change in quantity divided by the change in price. So this answers the question for one unit change in price, say one dollar for example, how, by how much does the quantity demanded change? So we're at least on the right track here, but it's still a little bit strange because we want something that really can be used to compare across markets and to say, well, what markets are actually more responsive than others? It would be sort of strange to compare a $1 increase or decrease in the price of an apple to a $1 increase or decrease in the price of a Boeing 747. So people clearly don't really think about those the same way, so we need some way to take that sort of comparability into account. To quantify responsiveness of quantity demanded to price, we use what's called price elasticity of demand. We'll come back in a little bit and talk about other types of elasticities, but we'll focus on this one for now as an example. The price elasticity of demand is represented not by the absolute change in quantity demanded divided by the absolute change in price, but in terms of the relative change in quantity demanded divided by the relative change in price or mathematically put, just percent change in quantity divided by percent change in price. Let's think about what this really means mathematically. Now, you see here as a refresher, we have our formulas for percent change. And the percent change in quantity demanded is just the new quantity demanded minus the old quantity demanded divided by the old quantity demanded times 100%. We can write that a little bit more simply as just the change in quantity demanded divided by quantity demanded times 100%. We can do the same thing with price. So the percent change in price is just the new price minus the old price divided by the old price times 100%. Or alternatively, change in P divided by P times 100%. Now when we put that together and say, well, what does this elasticity of demand really come out to? We can just plug in the formulas for percent change, and we notice that doing a little bit of algebra, we end up with change in quantity demanded divided by change in price, which is the reciprocal of the slope of this demand curve here, but it's scaled by the ratio of price to quantity. So it is related to the slope of the demand curve, or rather the reciprocal, but it's off by this factor here. You'll notice here that I made a minor change to the elasticity formula, and I put the absolute value signs around this percentage change formula. The reason that I do that is because for price elasticity of demand, you usually see it written as a positive number, whereas if you think about it, quantity demanded and price move in opposite directions, as we can see from the fact that the demand curve slopes downwards, and we would actually always get a negative number here. And since we always get a negative number, it's easier to just represent it as the absolute value of that quantity. You'll notice that we do this only for price elasticity of demand and not for other types of demand. Because for other types of demand, the sign positive or negative actually conveys information. The other thing to note about elasticity is that there are no units on this quantity. Because if you were to write out all the units, they would end up canceling out. So we can say that elasticity whether it be price elasticity of demand or other elasticities that we'll talk about, they're just pure numbers and they don't have any units. 
Now to illustrate why it's so important to think about elasticity at a particular point on the demand curve, let's contrast a constant slope demand curve, which we all know is a straight line, to a constant elasticity demand curve. Now the math here isn't so important, but what's important to remember is the constant elasticity demand curve is not a straight line, and it is in fact bowed in towards the origin. Now, because we usually deal with demand curves that look something like this, we're going to need to be sure to say from and to what point we're talking about when we refer to elasticity of demand. Now, in order to illustrate what happens to elasticity of demand as we move down our demand curve, let's consider this particular example. I've drawn a very simple demand curve with a slope of negative 1, and the slope is negative 1 regardless of where we are on the curve. But I've also noted a number of points here, so let's think about what the elasticity looks like at each of these points. Now you can see over here, we can move down the demand curve from a price of 10 to 9, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, etc. And this corresponds to moving down in this direction. As our price goes down, our quantity goes up. And for each of these, we can calculate the percent change in price and the percent change in quantity. So as we go from 10 to 9 on price, that's a decrease in price of 10%. As we go from 9 to 8, it's a decrease of 11%. 8 to 7 is a decrease of 12.5%. 3 to 2 is a decrease of 33%. 2 to 1 is a decrease of 50%. 1 to 0 is a decrease of 100%. Correspondingly, we can see the percent increases in quantity. Well, as we go from 0 to 1, well, that's actually an infinite percent increase. So we go from 1 to 2, that's a 100% increase. 2 to 3 is a 50% increase. 7 to 8 is a 14% increase. 8 to 9 is a 12.5% increase. And 9 to 10 is an 11% increase. Notice here that we're either increasing or decreasing by one unit each time, but they translate to smaller percentages when the numbers that we're talking about are bigger. So we know that the elasticity of demand is equal to the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price, so we can go ahead and calculate that for each of these points. Well, infinity divided by negative 10%, well, that's just infinite. And if you remember, we always take the absolute value when we're talking about elasticity of demand. So here, the elasticity of demand is in fact infinite. Moving down to this point here, we get 100% divided by negative 11%. Take the absolute value of that and we get about 9. The absolute value of 50% divided by 12.5% is 4. The absolute value of 14% divided by 33% is about 0.42. The absolute value of 12.5% divided by 50%, well that's 0.25 or 1 fourth. And finally, 11% divided by 100% in absolute value terms, this is about 0.11. So you'll notice that even though we were talking about a one unit increase and decrease each time, that translates to a number of different values for elasticity. If we plot the elasticity numbers where they go on our graph, you'll notice that as we move down the demand curve, our elasticity numbers get smaller. At the top left here, we have a point where our elasticity is what we call perfectly elastic, or we get an elasticity of demand of infinity. As we move down to the bottom right, we get to a point where our demand is perfectly inelastic, or in other words, our elasticity of demand is equal to zero.